It's crunch time here at the shop. Let's get started. Well, good morning. Welcome back here to the shop. Today is Monday, August the 8th, and this is Crunch Week. Uh, the show starts this Saturday, and I've got a pile of work to do to get ready for it. Last week, if you remember, we were able to get our medium safety stand all built. And again, this is as far really as I'm going to go with it this week. I'm going to leave it loose and display it over there with our, our buckskin on it. And again, we can bring it over, bring it back here to the shop the following week and, you know, go through it, sand it, stain it and finish it up for the, the following weekend again for the show. Because remember, this is three consecutive weekends. So that's the plan for the safety stand. I think today the first thing I'm going to do is not only get everything cleaned up, from our mess last week. This shop is an absolute disaster. Try to get reorganized again, but I'm gonna bring that medium bow rocker over here and that's gonna be one of the first things I do. In fact, I think that's what I'm gonna focus on pretty much the entire day is get that apart, get it sanded, get it back together and get it finished up. So if I can get that done pretty much today, then uh, that would be a, a, a good, uh, again, check off the old checklist. I was able to get base coat on our buckskin in the paint booth. I worked a little bit over the weekend and was able to get the base coat on that. It's got a little bit of touch up I need to do on that this morning, so I'll jump in and do that real quick before I bring the bow rockers over here. And then I may this evening start putting uh, some paint on that as far as airbrushing, so I may jump in there and do a little bit of airbrushing on that this evening. Again, I've got Monday, Tuesday, if I can get, just thinking in my head, if I can get the horse airbrushed here in the next you know today a little bit today tomorrow and start getting clear put on it that means by thursday i'd like to be final doing final assembly get the saddle get the hair everything on that thursday um, and then i'm going to try to leave my friday to finalize anything that i need to do and of course get loaded then i've got to drive 40 minutes over to the the shaker woods fairgrounds over there and start getting set up for our show on saturday so that's going to be kind of the plan so it's a lot to do and again we're just going to hit it hard and see what we end up with so let's go ahead let's get started So in the paint booth, I've got the base coat again on our buckskin horse here. I noticed a few areas here real quick that I'm just gonna give a light sand and hit that again with base coat. It's a little bit rough here um, where the wood grain is still coming through. A Couple of little spots, but nothing, nothing major. Everything else looks really good. So it's gonna be ready to, to, I can start airbrushing here real, real quick. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna jump back out and get started on our bow rockers. Well, I was able to get the buckskin touched up with a little bit of paint, so I'm going to let that dry the rest of the afternoon here. Um, as you can see, I've got a real mess here in the shop from uh, last week and over the weekend. So I'm going to get this cleaned up, give me a few minutes, and I'll get everything put back and get everything organized again. And then we're going to jump on that bow rocker. Uh, 
After all of that rain we had last week, I uh, only got a little bit of water here in the shop and it just puddled right around where my planer is. Fortunately, I put all of my tools on rollers so it was up off the ground so it didn't bother it at all. Normally I don't get any water in here at all. This, this floor stays really dry, but I do get a little bit. I think I need to replace the rubber on the bottom of my door. But again, fortunately, I didn't have much, much water in here at all. Funny thing though with that storm, we found out that just a few miles down the road they didn't get any rain. So it pretty much just concentrated, you know, over our little area here in western Pennsylvania. But we talked to different people in the area and they had no idea it rained that hard. They didn't get anything. It's funny how that works. I'd say that's good enough for now. I need to get my bench cleaned off, you know, put a few more things away, and then we'll get started on our bow rocker. Well, that wasn't too bad. I got the shop um, somewhat back in order. I, I just really hate clutter, and I know in the back of me, it's all clutter and everything else. One of the upcoming videos, though, that I'd like to do, the episode, is I'd like to build custom cabinets above my bench. Uh, again, I built this shop back in, I think, 2002, 2001, right around there. And ever since I built this shop, I have been absolutely busy, and I just have not had time to you know finish things i just got it to a point where i could work in it and that's what i've been doing but i'd like to take some time and build custom cabinets up above here finish the bottom cabinets and i'd even like to finish this my big workbench i've got ideas um, what i'd like to do and i'd like to put drawers all through this and really make this a nice functional workbench but right now it does what i need it to do so well anyways let's get back to what we're focusing on and what we're doing here our meeting and bow rocker ready to take this back apart if you didn't see my earlier video of the oak rockers that i was doing and how i do them and go step by step uh, i'll put a, a link in the description you can go back and you can watch that but again what i'm doing here i'm going to take this back apart i never did trim the what i call the box the center section because i glue that all up and that's what keeps my bows especially this seam right here that locks it all in so i need to take this back apart run back over to the bandsaw and trim all of this and get this trimmed back and then we can put it back in our clamp and our vise and start uh or <laughs> belt sander that's what i wanted to say we can start with our belt sander and start getting this all sanded down so so let me grab my cordless drill let me get this taken apart and i'll head over to the bandsaw and get this all trimmed up
here's my second bow rocker and I wanted to bring you in I set the other camera up on top of my bandsaw here so that you can see again when I talk about the you know the box I talk about I'm talking about um, this piece here I call this like a stretcher is what I'm calling this and again I clamp and glue this on and once that's all dry then that secures this seam right here and that will never come apart as long as we have a good glue joint but I always like to make the stretcher wide and again go back and you can watch my other video on building bow rockers the reason I do that is so that you can before you clamp and glue it you can get all your adjustments so this gives you a little bit of room here that you can kind of float this a little bit upside down on the bench and once that's all clamped and glued and dry then we can come back what I'm going to do right now and just cut this piece off nice and flush and you know everything's lined up and ready to go so that's why uh, I wanted to bring you over and I wanted to show you that part of it and what exactly what I am doing just in case there's a little bit of confusion which I'm sure there is Back from the bandsaw and I've got my edges all cleaned up here and I'm ready to put that in the vise and start getting my belt sander and start going over this with the belt sander and really kind of smooth these edges and get this looking a little bit better than what it is. Um, over at the bandsaw though I did mention this part here and I refer to it as a stretcher that's what I call it. I was mistaken and I'm just not thinking here. I've got um, you know a thousand things going on in my mind right now I call this part a cleat so I'm sorry about that this is what I call the stretcher and again these are my own terms because it goes back to building the box and that whole thing but this is what I refer to as a cleat so I cleaned that all up on the bandsaw as you saw and now I'm ready to go ahead and hit it with the belt sander well I have my first bow uh, clamped down in the vise here uh, I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna turn my big fan on so I'm gonna disconnect my microphone and get my big fan going here because it is awfully warm and muggy in the shop here today so I apologize for that but who wants to listen to me belt sanding the entire time so let me go ahead and get my fan going let me get disconnected here and get suited up and let's get after this so let's get this bow rocker finished
Well, we are moving right along on these bow rockers here. Uh, you saw me, I've got everything sanded smooth. It looks, it feels great. Um, everything's glued and screwed together. I went ahead and uh, notched my hooves so that I can go ahead and fit my two spindles on either ends, my two turnings. And again, you've seen me before on my last video when I was doing the bow rockers, and I always stress about how critical it is to make sure that all of your cuts are perfect on when you're making a set of rockers like this. And I always, every rocker I ever make, I always strive for perfection. And you know, on my own head, it's kind of a, like a little bit of a, a challenge to myself. I wanna to try to make them as perfect as possible and one of the ways you can tell if you've got a really good set of bow rockers or the person knew what they were doing is if this uh, ends, if your ends down here match up as far as being level with the front. And again, I always look down and I always try to make sure that that is all perfectly even down there and when you look down it in the book on Anthony Dew Anthony Dew's book the Rocking Horse Maker you'll see in there that he's got sticks kind of uh, coming across I believe they're winding sticks he calls them winding sticks but you'll see them laying across and what he's doing is he's lining up basically your uh, horizon or your two lines and making sure that they are nice and parallel to each other and again these ones are really really close and my trick and again you can go back and review the the last video when i was putting together the small bow rockers you can go back and look and see how i do it i show you a few tricks in there and again it's what i call building the box building this in in the center here and putting it together flipping it upside down so that both of your ends are laying flat and then you can make your adjustments that way and clamp and glue in these cleats on the inside that's how i do it and again i think that's a real easy and real slick way uh, to make sure that everything lines up and is perfect and dead on i'll show you one of my first rocking horses because i'm going to be bringing everything in at the end of the week so i can start getting things loaded up but i'll show you one of my first rocking horses and you'll see you know i got everything you know crooked and cattywampus and again i didn't know you know i was just starting out and trying to learn how to make these but um real happy with this so all that's left now is we're going to fill our screw holes down here and start making our slats get our slats put down final sand and we're good to go
I'm almost finished assembling our bow rocker here. I've got all of our slats pretty well milled. They're plain. Uh, I've got the edges all joined. So now all that's left to do is take them over to the router table and let's put a beveled edge on all of these. I always do the first three first and then I can go ahead and fasten those down and then again I'll just start to cut each one after that and give it a slight taper so that it follows the contour of our bow rockers. So I have our router table all set up so I'm going to head over there and get everything routered. Just like before, I have my spacers that I've already made up that I keep handy. I'm just going to center up my first slat here with our joint on our bows. That's our center line. And then I'm going to screw them down again. If you remember in our last rockers that we made, we screwed them down. So I'll go ahead, get everything centered up, and then head over to the drill press, countersink some holes in here, and then we'll just start screwing them down. Now that I have my first three slats down and everything is nice and square, I'm going to move on to adding the other slats on. Now this is where I start to just take a degree off because again, I want this, I want these slats to kind of follow the taper. So the first three I just squared off, but the next ones then I'll start doing and taking a degree off of each one and securing them down. It just looks so much nicer when you look down them and everything kind of flows together. And believe it or not, a degree is all you need in this case. Now, this one is a degree. We'll say well, I took a degree off. The next one I may take just a little bit more off. It might even end up being two degrees. And then the next one may be probably two degrees. We'll, we'll stay with that. But, you know, whatever it looks nice and whatever it takes to follow that contour is what you need to do. There we go. Now it's over to the router table and then from the router table to the drill press back over here. We'll secure them down and we'll just keep going.
I'm getting ready to put the last two slats down here on my rockers and I wanted to bring you in here and show you uh, something here real world quick again you've heard me stress when you're making these bow rockers about making sure all of your cuts are you know perfect and and I always try and again I try to strive to make the perfect set of rockers every time I make one that's that was always my goal that's still my goal whenever I make a set of these and I just wanted to show you this I'm getting ready to put these last two slats down and you know you've got a pretty good set of bow rockers when everything going across here lines up and it's it's probably within a sixteenth of an inch this gap here in the same on this side it's just about perfect it's about as perfect as you can get for you know doing things um, by hand like this and so real we're all happy to see that uh, sometimes they're off just a little bit and then when you go to put this last slat down it kind of covers that up a little bit if you are off but these ones these are coming out just perfect so real happy about that I always add just a little bit of glue, just a dab of glue. I don't do a lot because I don't want it running everywhere. Well, there we go. There's our finished set of bow rockers. All that's left to do is to give this all a really good sand fill. I've got plugs that go into these screw holes, so I'll plug those yet and then sand those flush and uh, this will be ready for stain but uh, again we're not going to worry about staining it just yet uh, we'll take it over to the show just in its you know raw form and put it on display that way when we come back the following week then we can think about staining and clearing it we'll do that when we stain and clear the oak uh, safety stand that we did so we'll we'll work on that then but right now real happy we finally got these all done it's about six o'clock now on Monday and we'll go into the paint booth and start painting and airbrushing that buckskin and I'll show you how I do that so let's head in and let's let's head to the paint booth so in the paint booth here this evening and I'd like to at least start to get some of the airbrushing done here this evening try to get as much as we can here it's about seven o'clock right now if you remember the last time we tried this with the dapple gray when I was showing you how to paint a dapple gray we had a lot of that flickering going on throughout the uh, the screen you know you get those horizontal light and dark bands you know going down the screen hopefully I was able to correct that uh, been playing with the GoPro here a little bit in some settings so the only thing it looks like it could be a little bit washed out so hopefully it's not um, but we're going to try this setting here and see how this works out so again this is going to be our buckskin horse and the way I paint these uh, I do an almond base coat it's an almond color base coat just again right off the shelf at Home Depot I just have them mix it up and what I do in my trick to doing these horses I, I study pictures and I'll go on Pinterest and you know on the internet and I'll look at different pictures and I always like to start with the light I, I look for the lightest part of that horse in a photograph and that's what I base my base coat on and then from there then I'll start layering the paints on this and so when we're done we're gonna have lots of brown tones but then 
some of that nice shimmering almond or that real light color is going to start to come through here and so it's almost like the sun is hitting that horse and it's you know giving you that little bit of that shimmer in their coat so that's how i always start one of these horses and i've done quite a few of these buckskins and they're always a really big hit so let's go ahead what i'm going to do is i'm going to start uh to just coat this and start layering my first layer and again nothing special uh, createx airbrush paint and i'm just using a light brown it's the 5127 light brown against my almond and i'm just going to go ahead and just start misting this and then we'll come in and we'll go a little bit heavier in some of the areas the socks and the things we're going to go a little bit darker we'll end up adding black and some black highlights when we're done. But right now, I'm just gonna start misting on my brown. So um, just follow along and uh, you, know, you can watch how I do this. Again, I always like to start maybe down with the hooves and I've got paint in my gun right now just to make sure that everything's flowing good, that we don't have any problems. And then I'm just gonna start misting. And again, it's just paint. If you don't like the way it's, it's heading, you know, I've got paint in my gun. I always leave a little bit of paint in my gun. I can go back and just hit it again spray the base coat on and start over. Around here in, in the, the shoulder areas and back here in the hump area and that is, is going to be my light area. So that's kind of where I see the sun maybe reflecting off that horse. If a horse was in the field and that sun was hitting it, then I want some of these areas and I want that almond to kind of come through just a little bit. Again, I'm not laying the paint down heavy. I'm just doing a real light, light mist because we're going to go in layers. I'm just going to kind of circle around the area that I want light and leave that light. We'll work down into our legs. when you get up underneath the jaw and in this area it's automatically it's going to be darker so we always want to add a little bit more there And I'm staying quite a ways back. I'm almost staying about 20 inches away from my work. And again, I'm letting that pattern, that fan pattern, really kind of spread out a little bit. And just give it, a, again, a light, light mist. And then we'll just keep going. We'll work our way around the horse and just keep adding to it.
and you can start to see at least I hope you can here in the camera uh, but you can start seeing where I'm leaving areas white or, you know lighter in around here you know especially in here and again I'll keep feathering this down and keep working my way around so that we end up with just a smaller area in here maybe a two inch two and a half inch diameter area of just that almond coming through but again I'm just taking my time working my way around and just layering this paint on And you know when I get up in here into this we'll, we'll call it the shoulder area you know up in here these shadow lines I want those to kind of stick out so I'll darken those as I work my way we'll walk around the horse and you know, work my way around I'll just kind of keep highlighting some of these areas like up under here This new air compressor I you know picked up I put in here in the paint booth well I'll tell you it's been a game changer and again I listened to that video of me painting the the dapple gray going over that and the air compressor comes across as a little bit loud you know on the camera but honestly it's not it's really not that loud you know, here in the in the paint booth This area here, of course, this is going to be covered up with a saddle pad, the blanket. So I'm not going to be too concerned about, you know, getting all up in here, all of this. Again, I want to keep this area here nice and light. course when you come back here to the to the rump we can go a little bit darker Start on this side now.
Okay, now I'm moving on. And right now, that's enough of the light brown that I want to add. So I've taken one of my empty bottles of light brown and I've added a little bit of the dark, the uh, 5128, again, Createx, the dark brown to it and mixed it. So now I'm just going with a little bit lighter or a little bit darker uh, of the light brown, if that makes any sense. So again, start down here at the hooves. So this isn't a lot dark, it's just a little bit, just about a shade darker. So now again, I'll start with some of my shadow lines, real, real light. And I can go ahead and kind of mist it up into here. You know, it's not a big noticeable difference, but it's just enough. And again, it's just one more layer. You get up around the main area, if you look at a, at a buckskin horse, that mane always seems to be a bit dark up here. That skin is a little bit darker right around where the mane comes out. So I always like to make that a little bit darker. Again, jawline, up underneath the jawline, making that a bit dark. There's going to be a leather strap, of course, that, you know, that runs down through here. So it's going to cover up some of that, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to paint that all just a dark brown. I can kind of come in here and darken his nostrils. I'm going to darken the eye. I think that's where I'm going to leave it here for this evening. I'm really, 
you know hot and sweaty i'm really wanting a shower and it's about 7 30 going on eight o'clock right now on monday night so again real happy with what i was able to get done today and we were able to start airbrushing this guy i think tomorrow morning we get in here to the shop this is where we're going to start we're going to start with this guy let's finish airbrushing him and we'll get this all done we possibly could even clear coat it tomorrow we'll see maybe wednesday but uh, we could actually let this dry once we get it done about another hour two hours of airbrushing here we could have this pretty well knocked out um, so that's not out of the scope of being able to clear it even tomorrow but uh, let's go ahead and stop here tonight we'll get everything cleaned up and let's hit it fresh in the morning Well, good morning. We're back in the paint booth and we're going to pick up where we left off last night, um, where we ended up. We were just starting to put our next tone uh, or our next layer on this horse. And if you remember, I had taken a little bit of the light brown and mixed it with some of the dark brown in one of my old bottles. So I've got that still in my gun and I'm ready to pick up and we're just going to go again. We're just going to work our way around the horse and we're just going to continue to just layer on and add highlights. And then when we get that done, we're going to move on to a darker brown. We're going to add just darker brown again this is nothing but more or nothing more than just layering on uh, the paint you know this almost you know, when I'm doing this is almost looks like parchment and again I don't know how much the camera is picking it up but if you can picture like an old parchment paper an old document that was done on parchment that's kind of what I'm going for here for my version of a buckskin again I want to darken these legs a little bit a buckskin's legs are a bit dark
gonna rinse my gun out. Okay, that was our uh, third layer. We'll, we'll call that like our third layer here of, of paint that we airbrushed on. Now we're going to go, we're going to go to, excuse me, we're going to go a little bit darker now. And this is 5128. This is their dark brown, brown again, using just Createx. Nothing, nothing special. And we're going to do the same thing. Um, we're not going to really get into too much up in here and into the body. We're going to focus more on uh, our legs, come up around here, up underneath in these folds where the legs meet the body, up underneath here. We're just going to darken and just do some areas, again, just to kind of highlight. I don't want to go crazy. You know, and I'm, I'm doing this, but I still want to try to keep as much of this almond color to come through that paint as I can. So I'm not saturating it. Again, it's just layers. So I went ahead, I was able to get our horse finished up earlier this evening and I was waiting until it got dark out. Now I wanted to bring you back in here to the paint booth and I wanted to show you what it looks like, you know, without that light coming through that window there. And like I said, you can always get, you know, depending on the light and the time of day, you'll see different variations in this color. But I wanted to walk you around and show you. I went ahead and I got the uh, hooves all done here. So I, I finished those up 
and I'll just kind of walk you around and show you you know what it looks like I always do the the rump here this back area a little bit darker of course the tail will go in and cover up a lot of that again not concerned about any of this area in here because this is all getting covered up by saddle and blanket and everything but that gives you a really good idea of what a buckskin at least my buckskin what it looks like so there's our walk around so tomorrow's another day and we'll get after it again and uh, tomorrow will be Wednesday so we've got a few more days what I'm going to try to shoot for is I'm going to clear coat it tomorrow on Wednesday leave it dry and Thursday we can go ahead and start doing final assembly on it but uh, yeah we're coming along so won't be long till uh, we'll be loading up and heading over to the show so we'll see you all in the morning well good morning welcome back and we're in the paint booth here I've got my buckskin all painted finished it all up so it's ready to clear I have my clear all set up in the gun this morning I went back in a little bit and detailed the teeth so that I can make those stand out a little bit the finish that I'm using once again this is a waterborne finish it's from Sherman Williams it's the Sherwood uh, chem aqua plus so it's going to be a semi gloss that I'm spraying so just in case you're wondering again if you're interested I've done some previous videos on me on um, the the uh, the finishes that I do spray here so anyways I'm ready to go I'm gonna do a minimum of three coats on this guy so it's gonna take a few hours to uh, get this all cleared but um, I'm gonna just spray it come back in with 220 with my sanding sponges give it a light sand do it again you know until we get three coats of clear on it so well let me get suited up here and let's get some clear on this I just finished spraying our third coat of clear on our buckskin horse I'll give you a quick walk around it's still a bit uh, soft it's gonna take you know at least 12 24 hours of it just sitting until we can really do anything with it which is fine because again tomorrow which is Thursday I want to go ahead and do final assembly on this so we can go ahead and get the main put on it get the tail put on it you know get everything finished up and uh, but there we go there's our buckskin so that's gonna look good over at the show Saturday and this is always you know a, uh, a crowd favorite seeing this buckskin over there there we go well it's Friday here at the shop and I've got all of my work that I want to take over for the show to show for the next three days I've got it all staged and I'm just about ready to load and I'll show you everything that I'm taking over there Thursday yesterday was pretty much just everything getting assembled getting everything finalized putting stuff together I didn't do a whole lot of filming yesterday I started to but then I just started really kind of put myself into high gear and just started flying um, so I apologize but there really wasn't much to see it was just me running around the shop like a chicken with my head cut off uh, but yesterday I went ahead and I got my buckskin all put together 
So the buckskins all finished up as far right now for this week, at least for the show. Again, the stand is unfinished. I'll bring it back uh, Sunday after the show and then I'll work on that here next week. But our buckskins all put together so I can show it and display it over there for the weekend. My large horse, my medium and my small are back on their stands. This stand, of course, I had in storage and I got it down, got it cleaned up. So my big guy's sitting there temporarily. He's in primer, all of my other three horses are in primer and that's the way I think I'm gonna keep it for now because that way if somebody comes through and they'd like to order a horse, they can pick out you know, what they want. And you know, as far as the color of horse they want and the mane and the saddle, they can pick all of that out. So we'll leave it, we'll leave them in primer for now. And then of course I've got different bodies small and medium bodies in various stages of production here so people still are interested in you know how these horses start so we'll leave them like that but this is pretty much everything that I've got that I want to take over to the show now this guy here you haven't seen him this is one of my first horses that I've done and I pretty much dedicated this horse to just let the kids play on it and ride it and again, this one's one of my first, it's over 20 years old and it still looks like the day I made it. But again, I always chuckle because, in a, and I guess any artist is like this, I get a little bit embarrassed about showing some of my first pieces because it is so crude. And I've even thought about going back and stripping it down and re-carving it and you know, making it look like the horses of today. But then I, I don't wanna do that. But you can see how crude. The, the head's real wide, you know, I brought the jawline, you know, right up way, way too high and the proportions and everything just aren't quite there. But then again, that's primitive and that's, people love this horse. In fact, I've had kids, I'm probably getting to the point where kids that were riding this as small children probably are, are starting to have kids of their own. And I, I've had different families come over here and they've said that their kids have grown up on this horse and they've ridden it. Well, they're probably getting to a point here where they're gonna be bringing their kids over to ride this horse. So that, that's probably coming in the next few years and that'll be a lot of fun. But again, it kind of shows that I'm getting a lot older. <laughs> well, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get my trailer hooked up and get it backed up here. Few things I've gotta offload on that trailer uh, before I can start getting loaded, but I've got my brother here. He's gonna help me and he's gonna go along for the ride. So I'm gonna get everything backed up here and we'll start getting loaded. And then we're gonna head over to Shaker Woods. Well, here we are Saturday morning and we're about to about to get the show started here the gates are just about to open and hey we made it here uh, everyone so excited to be here I'll show you what the, the booth looks like and kind of walk you around real quick before the gates open up
So here we are, I'm with my beautiful wife Donna. Say hi Donna. Hi Donna. <laughs> it's about 11.30 right now and I think we have our first sale. Uh, fingers crossed. A uh, real nice couple that live about 40 minutes from us over in Pennsylvania because right now we're in Columbia, Ohio. They're supposed to come back tomorrow morning and put a deposit down on a large horse, so fingers crossed. But yeah, so 11.30 and lots of people and people are still coming in. Still coming. At some point, I'll go out in the parking lot and I'll show you how far the parking lot is. But this place is, it, it's so much fun here. Well, we're back from our first weekend at Shaker Woods and we had a great time, met a lot of great people and we were able to secure a couple of orders. So those are gonna be coming up. I brought our buckskin back here to the shop. I've got the stand that I wanna take apart tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be August the 15th. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that taken apart and get a final sand on that, get it stained and then get it in the paint booth and get some clear coat put on it. Then we can get our buckskin permanently fastened down to that so I can take it back over and show it for the second weekend of Shaker Woods. Remember, it's going to be three weekends there. So I'll be bringing you some more highlights of the show uh, for some upcoming, you know, videos that I'll be putting together for you all. I hope you enjoyed watching the a little bit of the opening day of the opening weekend, and you got to see a little bit of what the show is like. But I'll try to go around some more and show you some of the quality vendors that are there, and you know, give you an idea of how big this show is and it's a lot of fun so hopefully maybe one of these days you can make it over to Columbiana for Shaker Woods and maybe I'll see you there well once again I really appreciate you watching if you've enjoyed this video again think about sharing it hit that like and subscribe button and also hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I post a new video and we'll see you back here at the shop next week